What is the most unlikely thing imaginable? What is the longest finite time that has ever been calculated? What is the biggest possible number that has ever been calculated? All these questions are pointed towards Poincaré recurrence. After an unfathomably long time, every state of an isolated and dynamic system that has an unchanging set of physical laws will be repeated. If we continuously shuffle a deck of cards, we will eventually end up with a deck in its standard order. Imagine a box filled with gas molecules moving around randomly. If you could stop all the gas molecules for a moment, each molecule would occupy a certain position. Each collection of positions of molecules at a certain moment in time is one possible microstate of that system. If you continue watching the random movements of molecules, after a very long time, each microstate will reoccur by those molecules, including the one that you paused and measured. The crazy thing is that the same principle applies to the entire universe. The number of baryons, particles made out of quarks, like neutrons or protons, in the entire observable universe is estimated to be around 10 to the power of 80. Every single baryon will arbitrarily return to a state similar to the initial state of the Big Bang, after an enormous but finite amount of time called Poincaré recurrence time. As a result, a new Big Bang will emerge. Every possible arrangement of elementary particles or microstates will be repeated. A less likely possibility is that every single elementary particle will return to its exact previous state, so the exact initial conditions of the Big Bang that gave rise to our universe will be there to restart our exact universe. For a Poincaré recurrence to occur in cosmic scale, all the 10 to the power of 80, or 100 million trillion 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 baryons in the universe should come around, create a very low entropy state, and the initial conditions of a new Big Bang. This is an insanely improbable event, and would take an enormous amount of time to happen. The infinite monkey theorem is also a relevant example in this case. If a monkey hits random keys on a keyboard, after a very long time, it will eventually type a complete work of Shakespeare by pure chance. After an even longer time, it might type the three most popular books from Stephen Hawking in a row. Same goes for Poincaré recurrence. Given a sufficient amount of time, a very improbable thermal fluctuation will eventually generate a new universe. While studying cosmology starting from time equals zero, you cannot escape the low entropy state at the moment of creation. That is the only sensible way of doing cosmology. Without this low entropy state, there wouldn't be a correct description of error of time. At the same time, there is no concrete description of how such low entropy state came into place. The best and the most powerful cosmological theory we have starts with the universe immediately getting to an inflationary epoch and eventually ending in an accelerating decider end. This has been accepted by a majority of scientists, but the unusual state of the beginning is still a mystery. Even quantum gravity or string theory don't have much to offer to this crucial point of low entropy state. To give an example, instead of the whole universe, consider a closed and isolated box filled with gas molecules. The system starts with a special low entropy state. All the gas molecules are gathered at some corner of the box. As the system starts to evolve, the molecules spread throughout the closed box and eventually fill the entire space in an almost uniform distribution. It will then take some time for the entropy to reach its maximum. Eventually, 
the system reaches its thermal equilibrium state and dies. This entire process also applies to the entire universe as a whole, but it is only correct for time intervals that are not too long. After a very long time, the system would experience Poincaré recurrence, returning arbitrarily close to its initial conditions in a finite amount of time. According to the paper Information Loss in Black Holes and or Conscious Beings, the estimated Poincaré recurrence time of a Linde-type inflationary universe, which will be covered in future episodes, is 10 to the power of 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 1.1 years. This number is claimed to be the longest finite length of time and the largest number ever calculated by any physicist. Such a recurrence can break all the gas molecules of the box into a corner. In a mind-boggling long period of time, the second law of thermodynamics is not going to prevent rare events like low entropy fluctuations from happening. According to the fluctuation theorem, originated from statistical mechanics, over time, the entropy of a system will increase in accordance to the second law of thermodynamics. But the mechanics of the second law is statistical. Based on this fact, after a very long time, there is a non-zero probability of the universe experiencing a spontaneous entropy decrease. Any finite and closed system can turn into its initial state or a state very close to it. According to the second law of thermodynamics, the entropy of a closed and isolated system is always increasing. But given a very long amount of time, the second law will not prevent rare events and that would reverse the direction of entropy. All the particles are moving around randomly in our vast universe indefinitely. Every once in a while, Due to a spontaneous entropy decrease, a sudden thermal fluctuation would create something like a teapot, or a computer, a star, or even a galaxy. Given a sufficient amount of time, these thermal fluctuations might eventually give rise to a brand new universe. Every recurrence would allow the universe to restart, but each time with slightly different initial conditions. Every time we talk about an event that is extremely unlikely, we're talking about an event with a non-zero probability, which, given an infinite amount of time, will happen for an infinite amount of times. Every mind-bending occurrence takes a mind-bending time to occur. In an isolated system, following unchanging physical laws, statistically speaking, every possible state will be sampled. The sequence of these recurrences is being stretched both into the past and future. This might suggest that our universe has no beginning nor an end. The universe might really recycle itself all the time. This might look like a cyclic universe, but it isn't. We will go over some popular cyclic models in future episodes. The obvious question at this point would be, did our universe begin with a Poincaré recurrence due to a natural but very rare fluctuation? One might ask that how Poincaré recurrence can take place in a universe that is expanding at an accelerating rate. The argument is that recurrences can only happen in closed systems that have a constant volume, so it cannot be applied to our universe. Back to our example of the deck of cards, if we continuously shuffle a deck of cards, eventually, maybe after two weeks of shuffling over and over again, we will end up with a pack of cards in their standard order, but not if we add one or more cards every day to that pack of cards. There is a finite number of ways to arrange any finite number of components. But if new states are being added constantly, the result would be different. 
This is a fair argument. And here's the answer. As far as we know, our universe evolved from an empty de Sitter space. De Sitter space is the simplest positively curved space-time, having a positive cosmological constant. A universe with this super type of space is an empty, vacuum-dominated universe with constant energy density, with maximally symmetric, homogeneous, and spherical space-time, containing no matter whatsoever, which is the same everywhere. The expansion of such a universe goes on indefinitely into the future. The Sitter space doesn't apply to the universe as we see it right now, but that which may have dominated the very early universe, and which may be the correct description of the future version of our universe. The universe also has a cosmic horizon, a boundary beyond what we cannot see or interact with, and all the degrees of freedom are bounded in that cosmic horizon. Evidence suggests that the universe would end in this other phase, after all matter in the universe dilutes indefinitely due to accelerating expansion. Such a universe would be eternal, but finite. A closed, possibly isolated system in the boundaries of our causal patch of the universe. A bounded entropy in this case, which can be loosely used to suggest that our universe is a finite system, and therefore it can have Poincaré recurrences. Also, the universe doesn't necessarily have to reach its initial state as a whole. Different parts of the universe might fluctuate into its very early stages. Here we consider some other assumptions. The maximum entropy of our universe is the same as the entropy of the Sitter space. The size of the de Sitter space is determined by the cosmological constant. And the value of the cosmological constant is the same as the current value of dark energy, the repulsive force responsible for the expansion of the universe. Based on all the assumptions we made so far, Poincaré recurrences seem to be inevitable. As the universe reaches its maximum entropy state and dies, if we wait long enough, a fluctuation would cause the inflation field to start a new cycle of inflation, reheating, standard cosmology, and eventually lead to heat death. Fluctuations outside of a thermal equilibrium state are remarkably rare and the fluctuations large enough to start a new universe are extremely rare. But due to their non-zero probabilities, no matter how improbable and unlikely, they will eventually happen. This might be hard to grasp, but at any given point in time, an infinite number of Poincaré recurrences might have already happened. Poincaré recurrences have strange implications similar to a multiverse in a bounded system. Given a huge amount of time, everything will eventually happen. Every possible event would fluctuate back into its similar prior state, or even the same exact state. So maybe it is rational to think of each closed system as a multiverse, but only in the sense that each closed universe has the potential of creating every accessible state. A closed universe is limited to its own physical constants. Therefore, its number of possible states is nothing compared to a multiverse which is capable of creating universes with different physical constants. Since it only can generate different universes with different initial conditions, but not with different physical laws. We will get into the idea of a multiverse and its different types in great detail in future episodes. A cosmic scale point career recurrence also has philosophical implications. After you die, if there is a non-zero probability that a point career recurrence will take place 
and create every possible state, then there is a guarantee that you will be included in some of those universes. The same exact you, including your cells, molecules, and every single elementary particle down to the quantum scale. If the universe is qualified for Poincaré recurrence to occur, and given an infinite amount of time, the configuration of physical and mental states of every person ever existed will be created endlessly. To make this even crazier, if every possible state of you can exist at some point, then there would be many states in which you would become advanced enough to extend your life indefinitely. So if you manage to survive until the next point career recurrence, is there a chance that you are going to witness your recreation? Would that recreated person be you? Probably not. Your recreation couldn't be the exact you, since he or she cannot share the same consciousness as yours. If you want to tackle these sort of questions, you should first deal with an issue. If you die and are reborn after a long time due to Poincaré recurrence, would that be the exact version of you that was born before? This is a philosophical question that so far doesn't have an answer. To address this question, we should deal with one of the most fundamental and difficult questions ever asked by humanity. What is consciousness? Based on recent observations, our universe is evolving towards a desider space. At the same time, it has been proposed that the early universe might be a thermodynamical fluctuation risen out of an empty desider space due to Poincaré recurrence. If we could see our past history, we might see our universe getting through Poincaré recurrences over and over again, each time with slightly different initial conditions. These events are so rare that they haven't been observed, even in small scales. But again, every extremely unlikely event in a closed system will eventually happen. Every closed and isolated universe will eventually find its way back to its initial state. Every single event in human history, every single particle interaction will eventually reoccur. This idea that every single event of people's lives will happen again, maybe for an infinite number of times, might seem like a curse to some people, but a blessing to others. No observer can observe a point query recurrence in cosmic scale. If we as a super advanced civilization could somehow manage to escape the universe in the far future, we can actually measure a cosmic point query recurrence. And if we fail to escape the universe, we will be thermalized and be part of the point query recurrence not an outsider to observe the whole thing. Speaking of rare events, there could also be a universe containing a brain sitting in the middle of nowhere in the universe, experiencing the same thoughts as you do now. We will go over this bizarre idea on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe if you haven't yet, and stay curious.